generally speaking, right? We can understand it uh, in a very broad aspect and practice spirituality as we like, as our belief systems uh, allow us to or encourage us to do. So some of us uh, still, there are people among us, uh, just like mentioned in Quran, who are believing that uh, stars, uh, planets, they have impact on our life and they're trying to realign their life accordingly to the movement of the planets. Uh, some of us, uh, including even in Islam, believe that getting into the trance of meditation uh, through music, through dancing, through stilling yourself, it's also an act of spirituality. You're probably very familiar with, uh, with the term chakras, right? Aligning your chakras, align your uh, spiritual, um, spiritual uh, centers. And you're probably familiar with Sufism as well. Uh, is that what I'm going to talk about today? Well, no. Today, what I'm going to talk about is the spirituality from the psychology perspective. So psychology actually had, um, has and had a beginning in exploring spirituality from the beginning, psychology started in 19th century, as you know, before that time, we've experienced indigenous psychology um, and uh, majority of the cases, what we understood by psychology by 19th century, it, that it was a notion of your heart, a spiritual heart notion of your spirit. Now, uh, as the time goes along, psychology developed and has different faculties. And one of the faculty is psychology of spirituality and religion or psychology of religion just, okay? So today, from the perspective of psychology of spirituality, we will try to understand how uh, Islam can be interpreted, right, from the uh, perspective of science called psychology. So the beginning of spirituality, if you like, in psychology started with Freud. He said no to indigenous understanding of religion or of spirituality or any types of worships. He said it is actually a mental health problem. But what happened uh, later on, uh, not, it, didn't, it didn't took a long time actually because his student, Jung, he himself was very spiritual. Not only did he understood, agreed and practice Freud, but also he was spiritual and he was trying to find his ways, his own understanding. He was very in tuned in himself, as you can imagine, as a therapist, uh, how to feed that into psychology and psychology at the time was the Freud. And he branched out and he started talking about uh, spirituality, uh, writing about spirituality. And then uh, around 50s, 60s, we have Maslow who created, who was first a, a psychologist who actually introduced idea of emotion intelligence and he introduced it in the form of a pyramid of needs. You've probably seen it. It's not on my slide because you've probably seen it uh, before. Uh, you've probably studied it. You, you've probably came across it. But nevertheless, the top, the top of, uh, of the human uh, needs, according to Maslow, according to Maslow, was spirituality. And how did he call it? He called it self-actualization. He didn't put it as a spirituality, but right now, nowadays, when we are interpreting in psychology his work, we name it spirituality. We have no shame, yeah? no restrictions, yeah? no barriers in using word spirituality or religion, actually, in psychology. And then we have Gardner. Gardner, he, uh, he, came across, uh, he came across an idea that, well, actually, there is definitely more to uh, a quotient of, uh, um, uh, of intelligence than just than cognition. So he said, yes, fair enough. Uh, I understand what you guys are saying. You know, you, you've made your research, you've, you have your points. Uh, there is some, something called cognitive intelligence, but there's more to it. People are intelligent in their own ways because, because, uh, because, we, are all, um, because we are all individuals. So what happened since Gardner, and we're probably talking about 70s again, so what happened since, he, since, uh, since his first attempts in literature, his first attempts in, um, in psychology, uh, we, having, we are now having different, um, different definitions of spirituality. And we know that spirituality uh, can, be, uh, can be named all different things. Uh, so, um, so let me just go to next slide, inshallah. 
Yeah, so what is that spiritual uh, quotient? What is that spiritual uh, intelligence accordingly to nowadays psychology? This is, this, is, this is my interpretation of what's going on right now, okay? But you will see that critical or existential thinking is part of your spiritual intelligence. This is important because what we have here is cognition. But cognition used for a different reasons. You know, that moment when you ask yourself question, what am I doing here? What is the reason of those experiences in me? This is that existential metaphysical issues, right? When you are, uh, when you are as a human starting letting into your conscious uh, and starting considering them for important right so that is your spirituality if you ever experienced those moments this was your spirituality what is pers uh, personal meaning uh, production yeah so this is you interpreting you learning skills along the way along your life and you interpreting life you interpreting life experiencing experiences dunya matters right from the non-physical non-material but rape from rape perspective what i mean what i mean by saying rape is non-material it's the world of a scene and in uh, in monotheistic religions we have uh, we have phenomena such as uh, divine uh, destiny kadr in arabic we have aspects such as angels we have aspects such as genes to take into consideration, even Shaitan. You, you, you're starting, you know, conceptualizing the life and your, 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 um, your mission in life, your place in life from everything, not only what you can touch, but also from those external non-materialistic uh, um, influences. Trans uh, now, what is what do I mean in that slide by saying trans uh, transcendental and universal awareness? Everything that I said so far, yeah. But now you say you seeing yourself in this world for a higher reason, yeah. So I don't know. You broke your leg and you're starting. To, you you you're not conceptualizing it from the perspective. Oh, I have to go to hospital. Oh, I'm, I I can't be as mobile as before. But you start. Uh, seeing uh, lessons and wisdom in it plenty uh, uh, th th there's so much i could say uh, about it even from somatic perspective um, but i need to hold myself because i have a different uh, lecture to deliver what is conscious state uh, expansion so this is that moment when you understanding that to your life uh, to your lifestyle you need to add uh, certain spiritual nourishment so you start feeding your soul. You start feeding yourself with prayers, uh, with meditations, with contemplation, some people with music. For some people, spirituality go, goes as far as feeding it with poetry and music. For some people, it expands into not only stilling yourself through meditation, but also tadabur, meaning contemplation on the word through Quran uh, or through the religious scriptures. So I hope that is clear. Now, we're moving into dimensions of multiply intelligence in Islam. For those of you who see it for the first time, don't worry, okay? Don't worry, because as I said, by the end of this year, inshallah, I will break it through for you in the challenge. And I'm sure majority of you can't wait, just like me, inshallah. So, um, so over here, I've mentioned that there are three aspects that actually participate in creating, um, in creating spiritual intelligence, but there's more to us than that. So if you think you yourself here, you yourself here you have different aspects from islamic perspective this is based on ghazali uh, al-ghazali's uh, concept of the self spiritual self in islam accordingly to him we have aspect of akul which is responsible for cognitive and moral quotient fitra which is your spiritual intelligence galp which is spiritual heart emotional intelligence nafs which is soul and it's responsible for behavioral and ruh which is responsible for your somatic intelligence okay so today just today i'm going to leave you a bit probably hungry for those of you who have love at, uh, for psychology and islam you're probably going to be left hungry but it's a good hunger it's a hunger for her today i'm going to contemplate with you a little bit more on galp which is spiritual heart fitra uh, and akal 
which is popularly understood as uh, cognitive intelligence. Okay, so what is that faculty of fitra? What do I mean by fitra? Why fitra is responsible for spirituality? Why do I make statements like this, All right? So, uh, so it is Tawhidic drive. What I mean by Tawhidic drive, it is, it's, it's taking you back to your origin. It's taking you back to, um, to that beautiful hadith when the Lord drew forth from the children of Adam, from their loins, their descendants, and made them testify concerning themselves, saying, am I not your Lord? And they said, yes, we do testify. So what is this beautiful sorry it's not hadith is actually it's actually proof from quran so what surah arafa verse 172 172 teaches us well the, this is this is it this is it this is this is that moment where we uh, we think we're forgetting but we met our Lord. We think we're forgetting because it's not in our conscious, it's on our spiritual subconscious. We met our Lord before our creation and we testified you are our Lord. And the moment our souls incarnated from the tribes of the souls, from the different realm, they came to this realm, to our mom's womb, uh, we already had fitra. We already had fitra. We already had this inclination, that monotheistic, tawhidic inclination in us, right? Um, and those of you who don't still don't understand, let me give you maybe my personal experience, my personal example. I'm revert into Islam, alhamdulillah, that was many years ago, but I feel that I was Muslim before my shahada because I had those conversations with God for as long as I can remember. And I never knew uh, how to address him, I never knew how to worship him, I never knew how to uh, how to give him his view until the knowledge came to me and until my fitra, my spirit, my part of my spirit was satisfied. I hope that's fine, yeah? So the natural drive, yeah, our makeup or our innate makeup uh, to, uh, to, to worship, to crave, to long for meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is fitra. Fitra throughout the literature of Islamic psychology has changed its meaning. So, uh, so at the beginning of my research, fitra was just natural inclination, and nowadays fitra has sort of pop culture names to it. And we call uh, and and you will probably find if you're reading, uh, if you are interested in readings uh, in Islamic psychology, that you know your fitra state, go back to your fitra uh, state, or. Um, uh, uh, re reunite with your fitra. So that kind of pop culture terminologies you will come across nowadays, but I hope that I have made it clear that every child is born upon the fitra. Uh, and that fitra will flares up in your life in a different moments, in the different circumstances, and drive you towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regardless whether your parents make you Jew, Christian, or Zoroastrians, friends, meaning uh, worshippers of your um uh, of this of the uh, worshippers of the fire or worshippers of the um, of the stars okay so i hope this is this is clear because this is important this is where your spirituality uh, uh this is where your spirituality flourish okay so the next slide uh, inshallah if it if it will uh, load <laughs> Uh, we'll talk a little bit more, it, we will go in depth into uh, how to, um, how to um, understand it in practice, right? This is all good, spirituality comes from Fitra, but what do I, what, how do I use it? How do I know where spirituality happens in my life? What, uh, what do I do? So what 